Now, before I get into the review, I would like to say that this is indeed my review. I did not copy this review from anyone on YouTube. I played this game and I wrote out this review myself. Honest. You gotta believe me. All right, so the first thing I noticed as I'm looking at the main menu is that this game could have so easily been ported to the PS Vita. Yeah, remember that thing? And I would also like to note that this is the Action Game of the Year edition, which comes with Rise of the Giant DLC. And no, you don't need a digital code, so feel free to pick up a used copy of the game as you'll be able to download it regardless. I think more games need to be like that. Oh, this is cool. You can change the appearance of the food found in this game. I like to keep it on Fruitarian. But whatever you do, please do not lock the game at 30 frames a second. Good lord, I never realized how slow and sluggish 30 frames a second could be. It really makes you wonder how some people can play other games at anything less than that. Makes me think of all those horrible Vita games I played back in the day. Oh, stop it. You know I love the Vita. I'll take the unlocked frame rate with the occasional frame dips any day of the week. The graphics as a whole is very indie, which could be bad or good depending on who you're asking. If you're expecting state-of-the-art 3D models, then you're gonna be disappointed. If you can appreciate 2D, slightly pixelated artwork with cool looking animations, then Dead Cells might have the aesthetic quality you're after. Honestly, at this point, if you've been playing games long enough, you'll know exactly what you're getting yourself into by now. The visuals won't blow you away, but they are clever and interesting to look at. So let's cut to the chase. What is this game exactly? It's categorized as a roguelike action platformer, but what does that even mean? Imagine a dungeon crawler where you basically race through a level, defeating enemies, collecting weapons, and other various treasures. Sounds pretty similar to something you played in the past, right? Well, here's the kicker. Imagine each time you die, you lose all your weapons and have to start from the very beginning. Not only that, but the dungeons you explore are procedurally generated, and that the layout will look different each time you are sent back to the beginning of the game. This didn't bother me too much for some reason. The levels are so simple in their design that having it randomized was not that big of an issue. It actually kept things interesting. What really annoyed the shit out of me was losing all my weapons and gear upon starting from the beginning. It's just so annoying because now you're thinking to yourself, great. Now I gotta do this all over again. It also doesn't help losing a particular weapon that you really like as well. The only thing that does carry over are permanent upgrades, which you can purchase by collecting cells. It's sort of like the in-game currency you get by defeating enemies in this game. The permanent upgrades do help extend your playtime a bit, in that some of them will allow you to restore your health, or even come back from the dead. The problem here is that some of the upgrades can take a while to get, which I guess is exactly what the developers were intending, to keep you playing this game for as long as possible. This is probably my least favorite part of the game. The combat, on the other hand, is very fun, however. When you acquire enough weapons and familiarize yourself with enemy patterns, you realize this might be one of the best action indie games ever developed. It feels great when you get into a groove and you're able to stream together one move after another, like a beautifully choreographed ballet. I'm not sure what that exactly means. I sort of just made that part up just now. The combat feels good, is what I'm trying to say, I guess. The moves are fun to pull off and they're cool to look look at. Some of them will just leave you with, wow, that was pretty awesome. Dead Cells is a fun game, but it can take a while to get going, especially in the beginning. Some enemies are tricky and will completely decimate you in a matter of seconds. I've said this before and I'll say it again. It's so annoying to make so much progress only to die and restart from the very beginning. Imagine every time you died in Super Metroid, you'd have to start from the very beginning without any of the weapons you've collected. Okay, maybe that's a little extreme, but the concept isn't that far off. I don't know. I still can't wrap my head around the whole permadeath system the game uses. Like, can't there be some sort of checkpoint system? This is just personal opinion, as this mechanic might not bother some other people. It's part of the game and the way it was designed, so I can't really fault the developers for that. It's just not really my cup of tea, if you know what I mean. I'm not sure if it's the type of game you play for hours on end, as it can get rather repetitive. It is, however, the perfect pick up and play kind of game, best suited for short bursts. At times, it almost feels like a race, as you try to see how far you can make it into the game without dying. It's a great action indie game, but I I think gamers should probably know ahead of time what they're getting themselves into before diving in. Now, if you enjoyed this video and want to see more awesome Nintendo Switch content, then click the link on the screen or the one that is pinned down below. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time.